All right, Ulysses, we took Tuesday off, but we are back at it today with a Wednesday mailbag episode. An evening version of a Wednesday mailbag. So if you want to partake with a cold beverage while we get through all of these interesting questions and concerns about race fandom, do it right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we are the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure you check out our YouTube channel, subscribe to that, as well as our traditional podcast available on all platforms. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Rays and email us, reach out to us anytime, LockdownRays at gmail.com. All right, Ulysses, without further ado, let's get right into these mailbag questions. This first one from Samuel Bayless, he says, do you think any of the recent trades have been affected with the new rules in mind. Love the show. Sam from Sydney, Australia. Uh, and I will say regarding Sam's question, I presume he means uh, raise related moves and trades to this point in the off season. Well, before I get to that, uh, Sam is from Australia and we do have a very big listenership in Australia. Yes. And I want to say congratulations to all Australian listeners of Locked on Rays and all Australian people because the World Cup is happening and Australia punched their ticket into the next round, into the knockout stage. That is very, very exciting. That has only happened twice in their history. So congratulations. I'm sure that uh, they're all very ecstatic about that because they, they did win a, a, a pretty nail-biter um, today, earlier. So I want to say congratulations to all of them. I'm glad you brought that up because I have not been following anything that's gone on in the sphere of soccer or the World Cup. You are the de facto expert on that matter. So thank you for bringing that up. I had no idea that Australia was in the World Cup to this point. So uh, good on you for that. Um, now, in regards to Sam's uh, point here, so let's just kind of briefly uh, surmise some of the rules changes that will be forthcoming in the 2023 season. There'll be a pitch clock slash timer, defensive shift limits, and larger bases. Um, to my recollection, it seems like most of the moves that the Rays had made to this point were more or less to uh, create room and space on the 40 man for prospects a la Curtis Mead, Taj Bradley. Greg Jones and others. Um, I mean, if we want to go down the line and deep into the rabbit hole, maybe uh, trading, getting rid of JT Shagwa because his ground ball rate was at 60% this season. That's a point. And then I know it's not necessarily a trade, but DFA Ryan Yarbrough, um, we know he's more of a pitch to contact guy. Uh, he's definitely not quick to uh, throwing the ball to the catcher. And uh, he's also, I mean, elephant in the room, uh, getting uh, a lot more expensive as well and, and has struggled over the past couple of seasons. I think that's a, a pretty good uh, summary. I think the only, the other one, beside, you know, would be G-Man Choi. But again, we, we've we talked about the money aspect, the production aspect also not yeah. being there. But that also, if we wanted to jump in this question with, you know, G-Man Choi on, you know, why are they trading him? forgetting about the money and forgetting about the production. Um, this could also tell you that they don't think the the shift going away. By the way, the shift is not necessarily going away, people. It's just going to be more nuanced. And we've explained this before. Okay, yeah, so two on the, on the left side of the, the bag, two on the right side of the bag. But you can still play with those outfielders, become a two-man right. outfield, and bring one of the corner ones to play like a, a third baseman did or what the second baseman did. So the shift is not necessarily going away, but everybody keeps saying that. But regardless, that could tell you that maybe they don't believe that the 
quote unquote shift going away is really going to be helping G Man Choice production. Like they think that it, that's it. This is what you're going to get from G Man Choice. So um, I, I think the the race traits have not been because of the rules uh, yet. I think right. they will in the future. You could also say the the guys they kept, right? Maybe they do believe that Taylor Walls is going to benefit. Uh, or the Rays are going to benefit from having Taylor Walsh's mm-hmm. glove in a in a less shifty world. His speed uh, with, with with the bigger bags and and the stolen base component might be benefiting him and Manuel yeah. Margot. So you could also say that. Yeah, that's possible as well. And you know, in in terms of also adding guys to the forty man roster, you know, maybe a, a Greg Jones over Brett Wisely. Maybe he just becomes that much more dynamic with the but uh i think it's still a little bit too soon to to tell uh as far as you know how much of the maneuvers they've made so far are because of those uh upcoming rules changes i i I would say a lot of it probably has to come down to uh roster space issues and in money issues as well with the raise uh to this point but uh, always appreciate the question or questions there from uh, Samuel, uh, we have more to get into uh, as well, but first, Ulysses, we have to tell the audience about something called Simply Safe. Well, we've been talking about Simply Safe for a while, so you definitely know that Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report for a third year in a row. Simply Safe is a whole new type of home security system. In an emergency, you have 24-7 professional monitoring agents that use fast protect technology, which is exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real so you can get priority police response. So do not miss your chance to save big on the only security system that Locked On recommends. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. This is their biggest discount of the year. So do not wait. That is simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB because there's no safe like simply safe. All right. I guess it's uh, an international themed episode today as uh, we have Michael Lund from the uk checking in he says uh i'm an avid listener to your podcast and love what you are doing i'm a couple of episodes behind at the moment so please forgive me if i have missed the boat i wonder if you could help me understand the differences with trades free agency team options and dfas etc i know it's probably not something you'd want to talk about on the pod but it would help me understand the way baseball works so much better i'm used to football i.e soccer where it's pretty straightforward I'm just confused by the merry-go-round of players going here and there. On another note, Josh Bell at first base for the start of 2023 would be worth a shot for me. And as for an older, more experienced pitcher for the bullpen, would you say it definitely needs to be a starter? Could Aroldis Chapman be an option, perhaps? Appreciate your help and time reading my email. Kind regards. Uh, Well, Michael, thank you for checking in and, and bringing up uh the differences between mlb and soccer uh, i don't think we're necessarily going to dive into the nitty-gritty of of trades free agency team options dfas etc but i do want to ask you this ulysses because you are a uh, avid soccer fan yourself uh how does soccer work in comparison to baseball is it that much more simple as opposed uh, in terms of the transactions or does it depend on the league i look i'm a blank canvas as far as uh professional soccer goes so it's it's a bit more simpler but again michael is coming from a, a football world so he already knows that so of course it's going to be a little bit more simpler uh, you know a baseball fan would say no way baseball rules are you know I, I, for this bureaucratic side of the sport is much easier to understand but you know soccer does have little nuances like you know somebody manchester united could 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 have your chip could could you know have the contract of a player and then they just give them to another team another club right. in another league you know they can kind of like you know use as a rental uh so you might not ever play for the team that actually has your contract which which is which is wild imagine if you know the angels had mike trout's 
contract, but then, you know, the chip, but you know, he, yeah. he keeps playing for other teams. It, it, it's kind of wild, but um, Michael, thank you so much for, for writing to us. I, the options one, that's a tricky one. I think that's, that's the one that like gets a lot of people because it can get a little foggy, but basically right. it means when you come up, you have three options, which means that you can get down to, um, to triple a to the minors not necessarily triple a but you can go down to the minors and not risk being put on waivers which means that another team can cl- could claim you so you have three options i think it on certain aspects right you can have a fourth option extended maybe if the if the player had been injured for a whole year right. like a 60 day il i think there's some minutia about that but usually every player just gets three and that is in three you know seasons so you use one option one year and then once the, the player is out of options, that basically means you're kind of tied to that player being on your active roster, or else you're going to have to put them through waivers if you if you decide to go to the minor league route or designate for assignment DFA, which you got to find a trade partner or release the the, the player uh, within seven days, or they can also if nobody claims them, then you can. Uh, keep them in your organization i think that's a very simple yes. way to attack those two topics not at all uh a 100 percent um this, this this was a survey you know survey classes and and like in college this this, this right was a survey type of of answer yeah and uh to his other points there uh yeah i do you like Josh Bell as a possible first base option now with Jose Abreu signing with the Astros and setting a little bit of what could be a uh, a price there or price point? Um, and also uh, that that means that he's no longer on the market. So, you know, maybe the Red Sox or the Cardinals or even the Padres or the Giants are are now paying attention to Josh Bell as opposed to Jose Abreu. So it makes it that much more complicated. Uh and as far as Aroldis Chapman, I don't think he will ever uh, uh, put on a Tampa Bay Rays uniform ever for uh, myriad reasons. Yes, I, I mean, I can just say two words, Mike Brasso, and then that's yeah. that's basically the end of that. Um, I want to go back to, though, I want to get your take on the um, Jose Abreu signing 60 mil for three years. He's 36. Did yeah. that surprise you? in a like wow that's such a bad contract or wow that's a long contract or wow he got that much money or wow the astros just got completely even better like what what was your reaction to the deal why well, i think they got better and they're a very smart organization so if they're giving jose abreu that amount of money something tells me that uh they trust him to be able to produce at, at least in in years one and year two and you know maybe year three doesn't really matter at the end of the day but uh probably a little bit higher than i would have expected um considering the the low amount of home runs that he put forward this past season but um yeah i mean if you're jose abreu it's one of those things where if somebody's offering you darn near $60 million, you you snap that right up. So I think maybe a little bit of a stretch and an overpay, but that's what it's free agency. You kind of got to do that. And if you're confident in his abilities over uh, the next one, two years and, and want to try to win another title or two, then, then that's a move you make. They certainly have the money. They certainly have the funds to be able to do that as opposed to, it'd be, you know, much more shocking if, uh, you know, one of those smaller market teams just came out right out the bat and and gave a Brady that that figure. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the the Astros just don't give a bleep right now. Right. They don't. Um, yeah. They get they get rid of their of their GM, uh, James Click, and they're like, uh, you know, Jim Crane's like, all right, <clears throat> you know, cracks his neck and goes, I'm gonna get a Brady. What does he want? Oh, he wants longevity. Cool. Let's give him three years. Yeah. Oh, he wants twenty per. Give him twenty per. And you know what? I know people are saying about the home runs, and it's true. It's his lowest career total for home runs since his debut in 2014 at 15 right. home runs. However, his doubles, he it was his second highest year of doubles. He hit 40. He had only hit 40 one other time, and that was in 2017 with 43. But everything else, it's it, it, 
it's there. I mean, the max exit velo, 89th percentile, a exit velo, 93rd percentile, hard hit percentage, 97th percentile, the K rate, 82nd percentile. I understand that if you're a race fan right now, you're going to talk to yourself like out of Jose Abreu, like, well, you know, that's, a, that's, that's, that's a lot of money. And, oh, that's a lot of years for, for a 36 year old, like, this 36 yeah. year old doesn't seem to be 36 years old. Like he has, I mean, yeah. Okay. The dip in home runs, but when the doubles are still there, the, the OPS is at an healthy 824. The, the yeah. average at 304. I mean, everything else is there. You get the leadership in, in the clubhouse, which the Rays sorely need. Um, th this seems like a damn wish we would have gotten him. Yeah, and I mean, let, let, he he was a four war player despite the lack of home runs this past year. And I mean, what over the last half de decade, you know, it's every year he's getting at least just one MVP vote. So that's it's not like totally shocking that he got that figure. I, I would have probably thought, you know, maybe going into before this deal was made, like okay two years 40 42 million dollars a little bit more money for yes. those two but the third year um is uh kind of a game changer in that regard so um but yeah maybe, no maybe great question the, there that's the, yeah that's maybe that was the 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 hitting point you know everybody was offering a two-year 41 42 and then the astros go no 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 here's the third yeah. year and everybody was like okay let's do that um yeah I, the third year is the one that got me scratching my head as a race fan like okay maybe Maybe that doesn't turn out to be such a good deal. But hey, if it turns out yeah. to be a really good deal for the first year, for the first year and a half, even the first two years, you'll take it. I mean, when you're an organization yeah. like the the Astros, it doesn't matter, man. Yeah. It doesn't matter. If you're the Rays, it matters if right. you're putting $20 million and the guy's not producing. Yeah. And he's, I mean, a slugging first baseman. It's not like he's a, a center fielder that you're relying on, you know, him to be incredibly spry and, and you know, great athleticism um so no i i get it from that perspective it's just uh you know the astros keep getting uh better in that regard um so yeah great question there uh we have one more to get to but first we have to tell you about bet online betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info stats news and analysis you can get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there football basketball uh, soccer and esports. It is all covered on betonline.net. Uh, you should know by now that it is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head over to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online. It is where the game starts. All right, uh, this final question, uh, we talked about the Astros for a couple minutes there. Uh, this guy is an Astros and a Rays fan, believe it or not, or Jenis Rashad, uh, and he poses this question to us. Uh, Even if it's very little, do you think there's a chance that Shane Boz comes back to pitch by the end of next season, kind of like the Tyler Glasnow situation? Uh, hi, Orgenis. Thank you, Orgenis, for your um, for your question. Unlike uh, the peeps in Australia, Mexico did not qualify for the knockout uh, stage of the World Cup, so Orgenis is not having a good evening. I'm sorry, Orgenis. That I'm stinks. glad you brought that up because I had no idea about that either. I look, I'm not your. This isn't locked on soccer. I I hey. will defer to you on all uh, soccer insight. Um, do not. Man, I don't know a lick this is, about what is this going is on. This is why this works, part. though. This is why this works. You've, you know, you've got football. I got football. You know, it's yeah. It, this is why you know th this works. Um, so sorry I can about tell that. you that the Colts lost uh, Kenny Pickett and the Steelers. Um, Kenny Pickett. But, I, I can. Yeah. I can. I don't get me started on Kenny Mother bleeping Pickett. And I don't know even know who that is. Um, so, hmm. Or Genis. I even forgot the question. What was the question? Uh, Shane Boz, could oh. he pitch the end of 2023 like Tyler Glass now pitched the end of 2022 uh, following Tommy John surgery? That's a capital letter N and a capital letter O. That's not happening. Yeah. Uh, I think 
too young. Uh, you do not want to mess with Shane Boz at all. You say, Shane, take as long as you need. Um, and he, he's the price possession, man. I mean, if you think Shane McClanahan is really good or Janice, Shane Boz is better there. I said it. Somebody had to say it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say it. Shane Boz will be better than Shane McClanahan. And Shane McClanahan is really, really good. Is really good. But I think yeah. Shane Boss's ceiling could be higher than McClanahan. So you take all the time and patience with Boss. Question. And I will, uh, I agree with you on the uh, Boss not pitching for the Rays in 2023. Uh, you're going to have to wait until uh, 2024 opening day um, or the second game of uh, that opening day series. Um, do you see a scenario where Shane Boz supplants Shane McClanahan as the team's a slash opening day starter? Hmm. And this isn't a Matan... trick question. This isn't a trick question of, yeah, Shane Boz will be the ace or the opening day starter after Shane McClanahan. It's gone. I'm talking about when both of these guys are still part of the Rays organization. Uh, if Boz gets the opening day nod. Well, if everything goes well, 2024, Boss is going to be pitching, McClanahan should be pitching, and Glassnow should be pitching yeah. as a $25 million pitcher. So that's your one, two, three. Oh, by the way, yeah. have you not talked about Drew Rasmussen? Oh, have you not talked about Jeffrey Springs, hopefully? So yeah. that Maybe Glassnow is the opening day starter in 2024, for all we know. Exactly. Again, uh, we said this the other day with, with player reviews. Um the Rays give the opening day not to whoever had the best season the prior year. They don't go by, oh, he's the guy. So we, no, 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 no. It's who had, who earned it, which I love yeah. that. It's it, this meritocracy that they have for, for, for getting the ball the first day. I think that's, that's exactly how it should be. Yes, I agree. Um, and it's just a timing thing with Shane Boz. And it's unfortunate that he was able to pitch or only able to pitch so few innings for the Rays this past season, just uh, six starts, 27 innings. Um, but if you remember Tyler Glass now, he w- underwent surgery in August 2021. Shane Baugh, if I recall, underwent surgery in October range of this year. Uh, so it's just a, a timing thing where, you know, uh, Tyler Glass now has 14 months to recover and come back where Shane Boz would barely have a year to be able to recover and come back in time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, so. like all the other stressors that we mentioned, it's just not, not worth it to, to put right. him on, on that scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. And uh, best of luck to him as he uh, recovers from what was uh, he had the arthroscopic elbow surgery and then the elbow <laughs> sprain uh, not, uh, you know, it, add him to the list of uh, guys that, underwent uh, unfortunate injuries over the course of the 2022 season for the Rays. Um, so great questions there from everybody. Uh, keep them coming. Locked on Rays at gmail.com. Uh, thank you for making the Locked on Rays podcast your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked on Sports Today podcast that is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe and we will talk to you tomorrow. 